We're gonna work on this shirt's flat drawing and we'll do this on Illustrator. A shirt, you know, for example, we start with the collar. A collar is a separate piece and then we have the band and then we have the placket and then we have the body and the sleeves and everything. If you're using a Mac, which I'm using right now, on the trackpad, you can actually just pinch in and pinch out and it actually zooms in and zooms out. First thing is we'll just make that as one, one side and then we'll copy it to the other side. So it's basically on fold. All right. So the color goes pretty much like there with a little curve. Uh, just take a point and then again, you can kind of make another little curve on this. If you want to tweak it a little bit, maybe the color is too steep, we can kind of adjust it with the white arrow. We will just copy this little part, that little anchor point, which I pointed out right here. Command C, Command F, which is basically copying tip of the color. It's copied. There's this white fill up, so which we can remove from here. You remove that and go to stroke and give it dash values. I think we should give it a, a dash value of three, gap as one. I think that's not bad. And when we zoom out, we get like this is pretty much the size. So now we can kind of fine tune it and we can reshape it a little bit, get it down here. And for the top stitch, maybe we can reduce the weight of the line to maybe 0.5. You want to give double stitches, you can again copy the same thing and command C, command F. Basically, when you do command F, you're actually copying it in the same place, same area, and then you can just move it with the arrow button or something like that. And uh, that's pretty easy. And then adjust this in, take that in. Now we will work on maybe the, the band of it. Point on the center front, curve it up, do anything like you can even just join it back here and you close it. Now, let's say you want to Right now, these are dashed lines, but you want to copy the property of this line. All you can do is press I, press I on the keyboard, or you can use the eyedropper, which is here, right here. I'm going to use the eyedropper and I'm going to copy uh, shape and it's going to take the property of that. And then you right click and send it to back. So I'm going to arrange and send it to back. So the collar and the, and the band is ready. If you want, you can kind of adjust this and make it a 90 degree, you know, on the pattern making aspect, you need to have all the points as 90 degrees all the time so that you get some good, real nice curves. I'll just copy this little curve and say Command C, Command F. And there you go. I'm going to just adjust it a little bit. So always zoom in and work so that you have that finer detail done. Yeah, that's how I get my marks the highest in the class. Yeah. Uh, command C, Command F, I'm going to copy the same thing again and press I and I'm going to copy again so that makes it a little faster. And there you go. So uh, if you want, it's, a, it's all up to you. You want to give it double stitches, triple stitches. It's all based on your style. I'll keep it to this. And so one part of my collar is done and I'm going to now copy this, this entire thing. And I'll go to reflect, double click and I'll select copy. So then I have a copy of this and I just need to make this. So I'm going to send it to back and there you go. You have that first part of your collar done. Now all you can do is you can just take this as a rectangle, send it to back, send to back. Again, you want to copy the stitch lines. You can always copy with the white arrow just on the line and command C, command F. And uh, if you want to give one more line, command C, command F, you can just bring it up. I'm using the arrow buttons, by the way, Remember to use shortcuts. You're going to be really fast, okay? Uh, I keep using shortcuts on the keyboard. Your collar is ready. Now all I have to do is zoom out a little bit so that I know the proportion of the shirt and I just kind of draw the placket. Um, proportionately, I think this much is pretty much fine for me. That's the front placket. And again, I need this to be a thick line, not, and maybe I'll just hide that Placket right behind, arrange and send to back. You know, guess what? I think uh, we don't. We can even hide this right behind. I mean, the the other placket. So arrange and send to back. So there is your placket. Now again, one more thing. What you have to do is just uh, copy this line and command C, command F, and move it inward. So you have the top stitches of the placket. You can take this, press Option. So when you press Option and you drag, you can actually copy another piece and drag it. 
I'm still pressing shift as well so that it just moves perfectly horizontally. So yeah, so that's the idea here. Uh, you don't have to worry about much about that right now. If you really, if you're really on your basic level, you can just command C and command F and just move it with the right arrow. So your placket is done. Now let's shape up the body. Now, remember one thing, we always have to make sure. Hello, okay, uh, I think I need to keep this on silent. Yeah, okay. So the thing is, uh, always make sure that every piece that you're working on is a fill pattern. What I mean to say is everything, like the placket is a, is a fill pattern, a collar is a fill pattern, the, the band is a fill pattern, and then the body also is a fill pattern. We draw the body. I'm just going to give a little curve to it so there's a little bit of uh, life to it. Otherwise, we mostly draw flat drawings which are very, very sharply geometric. You know, it's quite boring. So just a little bit of a curve here I'm going to give so that they, later when we'll start doing the drape and all, it'll be more fun. So kind of a little bit of armhole you're not remember you're not drawing a pattern it's a shirt and you're trying to draw a 3d version of a shirt so there you go and give it a little bit of um, slimness if you like it's based on your choice and then the hem again it's all again your choice you may like it you may not like it i'll press shift here to end and then i come back to this last point so that i kill the 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 curve handle on the left side and then i just go up press shift somewhere, anywhere, because it's going to be hidden behind and I'll join back. So this is what I did. I created a container. What I mean is when I fill it with a color, it's basically a complete container. Make sure to do that because later when you'll have to fill something, when you have to fill a fabric or something like that in the future, you will have all these filled containers. Copy the stitch lines. You need to have the yoke as well. You can even do the yoke copying this this line property as is and command C command F and then you just drag it down there you go that's your yoke you know the shirt yoke right it's basically the double panel that goes here and on the back so it supports the entire body uh, command C command F move it up or down wherever you want again press I and copy the property there you go okay so that is your part one of this thing and uh, da, 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 there you, I think, yeah, this is fine. Now, a little tricky part is doing the sleeves because you know, it's basically 3D. You, you're not just gonna draw, draw the sleeves just like that, but there has to be a little bit of curve and there should be some folds and all that. So it's a little tricky thing, but you gotta practice and you'll get used to it. So try doing it um, with somewhere here in, the, in any of the point on the shoulder tip. And then I'm just kind of going to move it a little bit here it's, it has to be a little bit, you know, like a shirt drape. You know, it just got to be a little casual. And uh, there you go. Maybe there's a little bit of fold here. It's all up to you. It's, all, it's your style. I just like to do it this way. And I go here and make some folds. You know how the folds go, right? You have all these curves and folds. So we're going to cover this up as well. And... Um, bring it out here so what I'm doing is I'm just going a little outside I'm going to keep the curve a little straighter and I'm going to run on this curve as the armhole command C command F and let that be the top stitch so that it shows as if the sleeve is actually on top of the body so it's more like this rather than this right I was playing around here maybe I can just adjust this a little bit more so you know it's it's a little bit too pointy and later we're going to add some folds and all that so don't worry about that i think this is a little too much for a woven shirt it's good for you can have more loose curves and all that on a knit or something like that but on a on a woven fabric it's a little bit too much the curves so keep it a little more straight and all that yeah so that's pretty much it and then we'll do the cuff let's deselect and let's do the cuff here again a closed loop so As designers, you're supposed to draw it more realistic. You know, there should be the curves and the, the angles should actually be more expressive than just being like a tech pack drawing. OK, uh, let me know if you've understood or not. Otherwise, you can always leave your questions in the comment section below. And I'm always there to answer that. And I'm always there to maybe make another video out of your questions with pressing I from the eyedropper. Command C, Command F. There you go. One more side. You want to give double stitches. It's all up to you. 
you can again copy it and whatever you like i mean this is fine for me the hem will also have a fold up stitch so there you go i've just kept it a little more it's about one centimeter up the fold one little detail you see this little point you can always go and select the these two the, the corners the round join okay and then see it's gone let's select this other color as well and i'm just going to go round corners and you see that that little thing is also gone now it's all merging so let's just do a little little fold here now if you want to give it some some more expression because this is just a flat piece of line when it gives some expression you can again go back to your stroke value and there's this profile thing you can see select any of these i mean i really like this one so you see these have those pointed edges it gives more expression to things put it up as a gray color so that it's not mistaken as a design feature but more like a just a fold or something coming up once you're done with that what you can do is you can just copy this entire body. Do not copy the placket because otherwise it's just going to be double layer of that. Just copy this entire body along with the sleeve and again go reflect and go copy. There you go. You have the body copied here. Press shift so you can just uh, kind of move it horizontally. Press shift and move it. I'm approximately, I've stopped approximately there right at the center front. You can see this line which is actually going to the center front. You can now arrange and send to back if you want to do the pocket whatever shape you're a designer you're not supposed to be stuck in just doing those diamond or postman kind of pockets you can always shape it up you can give different fabric uh, as a, as the pocket you can do anything so keep your mind open for that we'll do that in the coming exercises let's say a blue okay why I why i'm showing you this thing is because somewhere you'll get these kind of glitches all you have to do is remove let's try this there you go you select the other one, select this, wherever you have white fill and then just remove this white fill as none and it's gone. So there you go. So that's why I wanted to show you what is a fill. Now the thing is this part is actually empty because I haven't drawn the yoke. It's very easy. All you have to do is just maybe just draw, draw a box or something and uh, uh, give it a white fill or whatever fill that you want and just send it to back. When you send it to back, it just becomes a part of a panel that's all you need to do okay and now we'll do the buttons i am going to go really in zoom in because the button has to be a little tiny little piece of a circle so what i'll do is i'll press option and shift so that i can resize it from all directions so that's the edge of the button i want to reduce the width of it a little bit so that you know i can do some rim detail or something like that if i want command c command f and then option and shift reduce the size now we need to do the button holes we can use pathfinder and in pathfinder we could always come down to first of all we'll use pathfinder for the for the for the rim and this thing so that we select it into this trim option where yeah there you go so it remains as um, reduce the value and these are not holes at the moment but these are just blue circles so i want to make holes first of all we ungroup this and then we select all these four of them we'll press command eight which is basically making it a compound path it's just like grouping but even the properties and everything goes together it's uh just use this uh the inner rim and these four holes go to pathfinder and press that second option you have holes on the buttons okay so basically you basically have holes you can see that that's your button cross stitch or something like that you can do that as well give it with curves and all that it'll fill up like a thread has been put up on there again you want to copy that and uh, again copy there you go you have that thing now you have the entire button ready start selecting all of them and i'll just group it so that it all stays together now what you can do is just press sorry press uh, option and drag it down pressing the shift key and there you go you have the buttons done now the thing is if you want well after one position if you want to have them equidistant you can choose to do it this way you just uh, press option so that you can make another copy press shift so you are perfectly going downwards and give it visually whatever gap you want to give now what you do is you just press command d or control d so the next button is going to be in the same distance as the first two i mean the second two buttons so there you go press d press d press d and press d the pocket if you want to create 
um, a pointed pocket. You can always add one more anchor point here and then just drag it down with the white arrow. And then you select all these anchor points here so you can copy the top stitch, Command C, Command F, and then use the black arrow and then press Option and Shift, reduce the size, press I, so you can copy the top stitch from the other existing top stitch. Make another line. This is just a basic shirt at the moment. So yeah, I'm just showing you how to do it. You wanna give double stitches. You can add one more, Command C, Command F, and then go in, pressing the Option and Shift key together. There you go, okay? Now, a little detail here. You may want to adjust this a little bit up. There you go. And there. I mean, if you wanna do a bar tag, the the easiest thing that I do actually is I just use the type tool and I just um, use either I use V and what I do is I do V so that it becomes more like a cross stitch. I select it with the black arrow and I press option and the and the arrow arrow button. So the the space between the letters are closer and closer and then just squeeze it down so it looks more like your bar tag yeah you can make it like that and then later what you do is just reduce the size to tiny little piece and that there you go is your bar tag let's just do a swoosh like a nike or something and i'm okay with that i can again copy this pressing i and there you go and uh, the profile is again this curve and there it's coming over the button so yeah now we've done the front of the shirt, let's do the back of the shirt. Uh, it's quite easy. All you have to do is just copy this, uh, copy the front. And uh, all you have to do is maybe just remove whatever is not there on the back. <clears throat> what I'll do is we'll go fast on this. You can bring, now that the, this is the back of the collar can bring this right above here so it looks like if it's it's a part of that collar here drag it up out drag the stitches till the edge do the same thing on the other side drag it out drag it out again there's a little bit of this thing that you need to adjust is just uh, take uh, this entire thing extended we just need to overlap at least something here so basically any of the shape can kind of overlap so now when we blend it it works better we select this the other body and the yoke and then we use the uh, first option on the pathfinder which is unite and there you go we have kind of merged all those shapes into one which is basically the back we send it to back arrange <coughs> send to back and we remove this little button which was left here uh, this is not the yoke part. We're going to remove this and we're going to create our new yoke, which is basically the back yoke. Uh, we can just take a straight line for now. You can always do different stylings like Western yoke and all that, but that we can do in the next uh, episode. All set, I think pretty much. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is just group it, group the front, and sometimes you can just keep them overlapped like this because if one half of the design is visible, then I think it's good enough. And there you go, that's your shirt. I would prefer to keep the back to the back, behind, send to back, because mostly the front has more design options and all that. So we, we just missed out one more thing. That is basically the placket. So you come back here, you don't need a fill here, and you wanna give top stitches, you can give top stitches, it's all up to you. Uh, it's just that it's a little too, you know, really, really narrow. So if you have that space to give it a top stitch, it's your choice the way you want with the same kind of top stitches. And then what else you need is the button, which was left here by chance. Ungroup, and then the button. Okay, so that's how you do it. You wanna reduce the size of this button. Mostly these, the, the cuff buttons are about two lines smaller. Um, mostly the front buttons are about 18 line and these are 16 line buttons. Just a piece of technical advice, which will be handy for you. And you can even take this, the placket, the top stitches. Again, press option, drag it to the other side, take it as is, 
and you want to reflect it, use the reflect tool. This time you don't have to copy because you already have a piece. So just say OK and uh, press V for the black arrow and just place it there. There you go. So you're done. This is your shirt flat drawing. Basic. Um, well, at least I did the shirt. So see you around.